Yo, it's your boy Blaze Hollow coming back from a very long vacation, and I'm very sorry to make you all wait, but I am back with part 9 of All for One, and here's going to be a very special thing I'm going to do for all of you. If this video reaches over 200 likes and gets over 50 comments, I will start working on part 10 right away and drop every other project, but with all that said, let's start that intro. <laughs> There will also be no recap, so if you want to know what happened in the previous part, please go check it out. Endeavor was sitting in his study as his phone was starting to go off. As he picked it up, he heard the voice of someone who wasn't very familiar as he tried to make a deal with him. Who is this before I say anything else? Overhaul looks over at his entire group as they just nod at him to go ahead. This is Overhaul. I want to talk about making a deal with you where I hand over all the information about my organization in exchange for a new chance at life for me and my precepts. Endeavor sat up from his chair as he started to place his right hand on the desk tapping it as he was trying to think it all over. And what guarantee do I have that this isn't a trap? Is there anything that you could say or do that could convince me otherwise? Overhaul thought it over for a minute as he realized he didn't really have anything until he looked over at all for one. I might actually have someone here who could be able to convince you that I'm willing to go legit. Overhaul then holds up the phone to Izuku motioning for him to take it and then he just nods as he then grabs it and gets ready by clearing his throat. Hello Endeavor. I feel like you should be giving my friend the benefit of the doubt. We were able to come to an agreement over everything. Endeavor just grinned as he wished that he made a bet with his friends about where his sons were going tonight because he would have won. Hello son, so this is where you ran off to tonight. Are you sure that you're able to trust these people by being able to stand in front of a court and defend them? Even if it means ruining your reputation for life. Izuku looks around the entire room seeing his older brother overhaul in his entire group as he was finally able to draw on the confidence to say what he needed to. Yes, I'm willing to stand in court to defend Overhaul. I feel like we would be getting a better end of the deal if they ended up changing over to the Hero Society. Instead of being against us, Plus will be taking a lot of criminals off the street because of this deal. Endeavor was very proud hearing that both of his sons were willing to go against the law just to better the world, showing that they have the great potential to become real heroes one day. Alright, bring them back with you to the house. I'll be calling up some friends to try to get a court meeting by tomorrow morning while also getting a hold of the police group to be ready. Izuku was a little bit confused, wondering why Endeavor wanted Overhaul group to come over to the house. Are you sure you want me to bring these people to the house? We don't want to freak out everybody else in the family. Endeavor thought about it for a second, but then realized that it's not the weirdest thing that ever happened in this house. It should be fine, plus other pros will know who was here tonight, so I'm not worried. But I should go because I have a lot of phone calls I need to be making right now. Endeavor then hung up the phone before anything else could be said as Izuku let out a deep sigh and then looked looked over at everybody. He is willing to work with us, but he wants us to go over to his house, so it seems he wants to talk to all of us in person. He is also going to be inviting a bunch of his colleagues along with the police. I know that sounds risky for all of you, but you have to trust me. Rapa got excited, thinking that if everything goes south, he'll get to fight a bunch of strong people. I'm willing to take that risk. Mimic was on the table, sitting on its ledge. I'll go wherever the majority of the group is willing to go. Chronostasis was starting to get an uneasy feeling, thinking that this was a set up. I feel like we shouldn't trust this. How do we know you're not throwing us into a trap? Overhaul could see where his second in command was coming from and was wondering what All for One would say to them. I do have to agree with my friend. This does sound like a setup. Izuku had a grin on his face as he walked over to his older brother. The only reason that it's not a setup is because we gain a lot more than you guys do, so if Endeavor and his friends are smart, they'll stick to our plan because if they don't, they're fools. Everybody in the room actually thought about that and realized how foolish it would be for the heroes to capture them when they're trying to convert over to their side. After a few more words back and forth, they decided to head over to the Todoroki household. Upon arriving, they saw two cars in the driveway. As they knock on the door, Ray opens it and was completely surprised to see a bunch of people, especially former villains. Please come in and make yourself at home. Overhaul and his group walked into the house, heading into the dining area, but as soon as Izuku and Toya walked into the door, their mother grabbed both of them by the ear and pulled on them, making them wince out in pain. 
Do you know how worried I was when I found out that the both of you were involved in this? You could have ended up getting yourself killed. What in your right mind made you think that this was a good idea? Izuku was a little bit terrified to answer, realizing that his new mother was actually a lot more terrifying than normal villains. Listen, I've been dealing with overhaul for a while now, so I felt like I could trust him. Plus, we had things we needed to discuss anyway, so I just went with it. Toya just felt so humiliated, but he knew he couldn't lie to his mother about this situation. I went with him because I thought it would be better for us if we went as a team. You know, strength in numbers. That way, at least if one of us gets caught, the other one can get away and let somebody else know about what happened to that person. Ray takes a deep breath, realizing that both of her sons had good intentions, but just didn't think about it all the way through. Listen, I know that both of you meant well, but you have to start thinking about the people who care about you and love you. What would have happened if you both died in this situation and none of us knew what happened to you? We would have been worried sick. Ray lets the both of them go and gives them a quick hug as she rushes over to the kitchen to go make snacks for everyone. Izuku and Toya then rejoin up with the entire group of people that they brought here. They see that the room is filled with massive tension from the pro hero Endeavor, Hawks, and Miraco, who were sitting across from the retired villains Overhaul, Mimic, Chronostasis, and Rapa. Endeavor was the first person to break the silence. Alright, seeing that you came here without causing any issues and that both of my sons are not harmed, I'm going to actually hear you out on this. Overhaul looked over at his group feeling a little bit on edge, not used to dealing with pro heroes this way. Well, I guess negotiations are kind of simple here. Me and my friends want some kind of guarantee that if we hand over everything that we've worked on along with my organization that we'll be given a clean slate on our record and to be able to enter Hero Society by joining the Hero Program. Miracle just started to laugh thinking that this whole situation was ridiculous. Do you honestly think that we're going to trust you after all the crimes that you committed? The fact that we're actually sitting here with you is blowing my mind. Izuku stepped forward getting everybody else's attention. And that's why narrow-minded people like you only get so far in life. If you really think about the benefits of going along with this deal, you would actually keep your mouth shut. Miracle was actually offended being told to pretty much shut up by a little kid. And what do you know? You're way too young to be telling us adults how to handle this situation. Overhaul started laughing, which caught everybody's attention because they didn't realize why he was laughing. You talked down to him like he's some kind of idiot, but so far he's been able to do something you pro heroes couldn't imagine doing in your entire life. He has me wanting to give up on my entire life of crime and actually help society. Do you think that any of you could accomplish that right now? Miriko was sitting back in her chair just annoyed while Hawks was trying to think about everything that he just heard. Endeavor was just grinning ear to ear knowing that both of his sons brought down an entire organization without having to throw a single punch. Hawks was finally ready to ask his first question. So what do you and your friends plan on doing after we're able to clean their slate if everything goes through perfectly? Mimic stretched his hand out like he wanted to be the first one to speak. I guess it really just depends on what the justice system has planned for us, but my power would be best used in rescue for collapsed buildings or even in caves. Rapa got a big grin on his face excited to explain to everybody what he was thinking. I would want to train people to get them stronger so I could have a better interesting fight and prepare them for the villains that would be out there in the world. Chronostasis actually had to think about it for a moment until something actually came to his mind. I can actually see myself helping out the police force with interrogation or investigation. Overhaul just looked over at all for one, wanting to still know what his real name is. I think I would want to go be a doctor because a lot of the medical research that I have could help people, plus I could fix them with my quirk. Endeavor was thinking about all four of their statements and realizing how useful they could be to society if the justice system lets them go through. I truly don't see an issue with trying to help you clean your record since you're willing to give away all the information about your organization and you're willing to step in front of a courtroom without any issue. Fox was just very amused by everything. I completely I completely agree, plus with the Yakuza out of the way, we can focus all of our attention on the League of Villains. Miriko was still unhappy about how she was being talked down to earlier, but wasn't against any of this. Yeah, I'd be willing to put a good word in if we had to take this to court. Izuku just coughed, trying to get everybody else's attention. Well, since we're all in agreement, I say that we should have the court dealt with right away. If the three of you are truly willing to step to their defense, then let them also plead their case. We should be able to get through this easily. Endeavor took the hint as he pulled out his cell phone and started calling out the police letting them know about the situation and what they wanted to do after a little bit of a shouting match for at least 10 minutes they were able to come to an agreement as endeavor hung up his cell phone and turned over to everybody seeing that he had a grim look on his face they want to bring this to the highest court in japan and they also want to include the top 10 heroes to be the jury we will have to convince at least six of them since the three of us will be allowed to be on the jury so it will be up to all of you to be able to plead your case and make sure that you can convince 
three other heroes because we will not be able to represent you in any way. Overhaul didn't look too surprised realizing that the justice system was against them. I figured that it would end up this way, but if you're willing to indulge me, I might actually have a way to spin this in our favor. Hulk's curiosity was beyond peaked as he stared over at Overhaul with an intense glare. Why do I get an uneasy feeling when I hear you say something like that? It's almost like you know something that we don't. Overhaul looked over at all from home with a grin on his face as both of their thoughts were able to synchronize for a minute as then Izuku started to grin himself. We could also play the card that I saved the life of all for one while he was at the fight club. And we could put it on the jury's heels that the pro hero All Might was trying to kill his son in cold blood. Izuku got excited realizing that the pro heroes in the top 10 will probably lose their mind when they hear this. That's true, not only I could be Overhaul's defense attorney but I could also be a witness to his change and by the way my name is Izuku Overhaul. Overhaul was actually surprised that Izuku told him his real name so quickly. That was kind of unexpected, but it's a nice name, and now I'm very excited for this court hearing. Two days pass as everybody was able to get their whole situation prepared as they walk into a gigantic courtroom. Overhaul and his friends were both in handcuffs as they sat down at the table with Izuku standing up in his designer suit with a briefcase and files on the table. As the jury came into the room revealing the top 10 pro heroes, everyone was then sworn in as they took their seat acknowledging the judge. Alright everybody, court is now in session. This is a private matter so we will not be giving this information out to the public until further notice. This is the heroes versus the Yakuza, so do know that this will be a majority rules. You do not have to come to a complete agreement on this entire situation. I will now allow Sir Nidai to speak in the name of the people. Nidai stood up from his chair as he walked over to the jury. Okay, according to Overhaul and his associates, they want to clean their slate by writing out their lower ranks and giving up their drug company. But how are we supposed to trust these people? They've done so many crimes and now that they feel that they're against the wall they beg for forgiveness. I say that we slap the cuffs on them and send them to the deepest parts of Tartarus for the rest of their life. All of the jury start to mutter around each other giving off their ideas as they see Nidai go back to his briefcase and pull out a bunch of files and give them to the judge and jury. These files that I'm handing out showcase some of the crimes of his entire organization. It shows that he's done illegal drug use, abuse, murder, the list goes on. I could stand here all day listing off all their crimes but I feel like I shouldn't have to. Izuku finally felt like he had enough. Objection, can you prove that any of these people here sitting beside me have actually murdered anybody? Unless you have a body or a photograph, you have no proof. And as for the illegal drugs, yes, they did make them, but there is no proof that they were forcing people to buy them from them. Everyone in the courtroom started to murder to each other to the point it almost felt like it was getting out of control as the judge started to slam down his gavel trying to get everyone's attention and to quiet down. Order, order everybody. Both of these counterclaims do raise a good point. In these files that I'm looking at, I'm not seeing anything about murder, so you're just claiming that they've done so. So I will be taking that off the record. As for the illegal drugs, even though they were not forcing their clients to take them, they were still in possession of them. So they will have to defend against that. As for anything else, Nidai will get to finish his statement, so you'll have to wait your turn to be able to speak any further. So no more interruptions. Nidai adjusted his glasses. Thank you, your honor. Well, okay, so if we take both of these things off of the table, there are still so many things that should be throwing these people behind bars. Like the illegal fight club which their actual attorney took part in and who is a child by the way. I don't know about you but a normal person would be sent behind bars for 10 to 15 years so you better have a good reason to justify all these actions Izuku. Izuku smiled happily knowing that things were playing out exactly how they wanted it to as he stood up straightening up his tie. Actually yes overhaul over here actually owns the building and the rights underneath it so the club was actually originally built for entertainment but on its document it was not actually explained what kind of entertainment it was. As he pulls out the document showing it to the judge. So technically he was actually within his rights to have the fight club down there. I think there's also an old saying the first rule of fight club is don't talk about fight club. The judge was looking over the document realizing that it did not go into detail explaining what kind of entertainment had to be down there so they were actually within their legal rights to do so. Well thanks to this document we actually cannot hold them accountable for the fight club because they were actually within their legal rights to have it down there. Sure there had to have been some shady things happening but we cannot check into that because of the raid. Destroying most of the building and any evidence that we could have found against them. Izuku actually placed his hand up trying to get the judge's attention. It's actually funny that you mentioned the raid. You see I had some close friends look into it and it turns out that the police and pro heroes did not have a search warrant with them. Now I may not be 100% caught up with the laws at my age but isn't it true that pro heroes cannot search into residential areas without a search warrant? The entire jury was actually in an uproar wondering what was going on. The kid was making complete sense wondering why the heroes and police were actually doing what 
what they were doing without the actual papers. While that was going on, Endeavor, Hawks, and Mirko were just sitting there realizing that everything was going according to plan. The only person who seemed to be most upset was the number one hero himself, All Might, who was trying to fight back to rage, seeing his former son defend villains. The judge then slammed down his gavel, trying to get everybody to silence themselves, as he was actually a little bit concerned about that as well. I am actually very curious, since somebody in the jury was actually a part of the raid team, would you like to speak up for yourself, All Might? All Might then stood up as he was clearing his throat. Yes, I can see where this is a little bit suspicious, and I will take all penalties, but we gotta leave that overhaul along with most of his crew and a lot of big name villains were going to be at the fight club that night. We didn't have the time to get a search warrant. I agree that it was a little bit bad on our part, but I think that we couldn't let this opportunity slip through our fingers. Zuku took this opportunity to finally drive the finishing nail in the coffin, making sure that no matter what anybody else said, that this whole thing will go in their favor. So from your statement, you make it seem like you're above the law. Sure, you had the chance to take a few high-level villains off the street, but you were not in the right to do so. There are laws put into place for a reason, and you all might so far have broken two major laws in a very short period of time. Everyone in the courtroom actually gasped because they so far have only heard of one crime, not knowing that there was another, as the pro hero Kamui Woods spoke up wanting to know more about this whole thing. Okay, so you're telling us that our symbol of peace has broken the law not only in the raid, but also with something else. Would you care to explain in more detail? Izuku was overjoyed knowing that another pro hero within the jury was curious about everything. Well, yes, a couple of months back, All Might was in a fight with the former leader of the underworld known as All For One. Instead of All Might trying to fight him to the point of capture, All Might went out of his way to make sure that he killed All For One. And yes, there are situations where heroes do sometimes accidentally kill villains, but I do not feel like that's what happened here. From all the people that I come across and talk to, they seem that they actually think that All Might went out of his way to make sure that he killed this one person for some strange reason. And this was something I originally wanted to keep off the record, but I feel like it's necessary that everybody knows that he tried to kill me in cold blood, and I couldn't fight back against him. It's only thanks to Eraserhead, Endeavor, and Overhaul that I'm actually here to stand in front of all of you to get perfect justice for everyone. I may be young, but I still plan to be the world's greatest hero, and I feel like starting today that I'll be able to start that goal. Kamui Wood sat back down in his chair feeling baffled. I just can't believe what I was just told by this young kid. Best genus could no longer sit silent in his chair as he stood up from his seat. Do you have any evidence that All Might has done any of those things that you're telling us right now, or are we just dealing with word of mouth? Night Eye jumped on this, making sure that he could get his point across as well. And even if those statements are true, All Might was within the right to take the villain's life if he decides not to stay down. As for the encounter with you, that is meant for another court case. Izuku just sighed, being annoyed having to explain himself. Technically, I can prove that All Might did attack me in cold blood at the fight club because I have two eyewitnesses. Technically three, but one of them cannot be a witness as the first one was Endeavor, who is part of the jury. The second person is Eraserhead, and for the record, the third person is Overhaul. But like I said, he doesn't count. As for the incident with All for One, I technically could prove it because I was there when he died. I'm even willing to go under a lie detector test to prove that I was there getting his last and final word. The judge was thinking as he looked over at Endeavor. Lame hero Endeavor, is it true that All Might decided to strike down a child who could not fight back and defend himself? Everybody took their seats except for Night Eye and Izuku as they were waiting to see what Endeavor would have to say. As they saw the flame hero stand up and look around the courtroom making sure that everyone was paying attention. Yes, it's all true. I actually had to step in and stop All Might myself along with Eraserhead. If you want any proof, you could check the hospital records because I had him temporarily admitted underneath my name before having him removed plus Eraserhead's in the audience so if you want you could ask him for his own testament. Endeavor sat back down waiting to see what was going to happen as Eraserhead actually stood up from his seat in the audience causing everybody to shift their eyes on him. Eraserhead looked exhausted like he didn't want to do this as he walked over to where the usual witness would be questioned. It's all true I actually had to threaten All Might myself telling him that I would go to the media with this as soon as he knew I was going to do that and his image was going to be smudged he backed down. The judge was temporarily in shock not knowing what to do as he slammed his gavel down. I think that we should take a brief recess allowing the jury to speak amongst themselves and once we come back I will allow both sides to argue out their defense before I give a final judgment. The jury was escorted to the back room so they could discuss what they were thinking as All Might actually shoved Endeavor against one of the walls in the waiting room. What kind of stunt are you trying to pull? Don't you realize that you're helping villains? And that boy is not who he says he is. He's just an imposter trying to defend the fellow villains that he's sitting next to. Endeavor was kind of annoyed as he shoved All Might back a little bit more aggressively. Listen, if you would have actually been a better parent, maybe none of this would
would have ever happened. But I actually believe in the five of them. They want to change their past and make a better future for themselves. As the both of them were getting ready to fight each other, the other pro heroes started to step in, trying to break them up as Edshot tried to stand in the middle playing Peacekeeper. Edshot just started to shake his head, annoyed with his co-workers. Listen, I feel like we should hear these people's testimonies. I want to see what the villains will do with their new acquired freedom if it's granted to them. Ending on what they say will determine all of our votes. Best genius got tired of watching the two top heroes acting like children as he activated his quirk, binding them in string. Listen, both of you need to be a little bit more mature about this, especially you, All Might. I actually might be putting an investigation on you for what you've done. Ryoku takes a seat on the opposite side of the room. I just can't believe that your own son had to be afraid of you. And you were actually willing to end his own life. What does your wife think? Does she even know about this? All Might just stood there silent for a moment, almost like he didn't want to answer this question. She doesn't know. Both my wife and daughter think that he just ran away. Everyone in the room was just quiet as they were shocked, not knowing what to say or what to think. All of the pro heroes just took a seat at the table, sitting there in silent, not knowing what to think, but being very disappointed in their own symbol of peace. As we cut over to a holding cell with Overhaul and his group sitting down on a bench with Izuku on the outside of the bar, sitting in a chair with his clients. So, how are you guys feeling about the situation so far? Rappa was just laughing, thinking about everything that happened in the courtroom. With just a few simple words, you were able to make all those pro heroes question everything, so I'm feeling pretty good so far. Mimic was a little bit skeptical, thinking that the heroes might be able to recuperate themselves. I think that it's still a little bit too early for us to be getting excited. They might be able to throw a curveball at us. Chronostasis just sat back in his seat as he was actually keeping a blank expression on his face. Even if this whole thing fails, we have now planted a seed of doubt within the top 10, so I think that we'll actually be able to make a change on Hero Society no matter what. Overhaul was just smirking, enjoying the entire experience. Probably in the second half, they're going to ask us what we're going to do with our newfound freedom. We are going to have to make sure that we plead our case perfectly and try to show them that we're really trying to change. That will be the final nail in the coffin of this entire case. Izuku was extremely confident that this entire debate was already over. Let's make sure to play the jury. We already know what we plan to do, but we need to make them believe that we're going to do what they want us to do. But in the end, we're going to make sure that the hero system gets a lot better than it already is. After 30 minutes, everyone was brought back into the courtroom so they could take their seats. As the judge allowed the jury to ask a few more questions, motioning for them to get the ball rolling as laundry hero Washi took the stand. I have a question for you overall. If you are granted your freedom, what do you plan to do with it? And do remember that you're under oath, so if you try to lie, it will be held against you. Overhaul adjusted the mini microphone that was connected to his outfit so he didn't have to stand up. I plan to go into the medical field to use all of my technology in court to be able to help those who cannot be helped by regular doctors. Wash was a little bit impressed by that answer but wasn't phased by it too much. And is it true that you actually hate quirks? That was the main reason why you took over the Yakuza in the first place. Overhaul sat up in his chair realizing what these people were trying to get him to say. It is true that I despise quirks but once I met Izuku he actually shaped my point of view on it. And slowly but surely my feelings towards quirks are starting to get better. Wash just sat down feeling satisfied by his questions as Ryoku finally stood up and slamming her hands on the railing. I actually have a question for you Izuku. Why do you want to help these villains so badly? Is it because you want to stab it at your father or is it because you're doing this for a just cause? Izuku was actually surprised he was being asked a question like that. My feelings towards my father in this situation are completely separate. To be honest I'm a lot happier with my new home. But the main reason I'm helping Overhaul along with his group is because they saved me while I was on death's door. Overhaul healed my broken body and spirit. It was all because of that fight club that I was able to meet the family I was meant to be with. So I hope that answers your question. Yoku was taken back as she looked at the young boy expecting a short and simple answer. But yet he talks like an adult which threw her off for a second as she came up with an idea. You said that you had information about All For One being murdered which actually means you would be able to prove that All Might killed him. How can you say that with such guarantee when you just told us that you found the body? Are you only going off of word of mouth with that statement or do you have anything to actually back that up? Endeavor started to sweat bullets realizing what might have to be revealed to answer that question. Is a question like that truly necessary it has nothing to do with this court case at hand. All I see you doing is trying to question someone who is actually not on trial. This genius raised an eyebrow at that realized that they're trying to hide something. I actually think that answer needs to be given since most of this court case has actually been targeting someone who is not on trial. So what's the harm in asking this question? Fox thought that he should finally voice his opinion trying to get everybody to change the question. I agree with Endeavor. We should take the statements of these villains to make sure that we know what they're going to do with their freedom. Night I 
eyes started to smile because he knew what these people were trying to hide as he started to chuckle, getting everyone's attention. You see, this boy is trying to buy time by using the parts of the jury to dance around the questions they don't want to answer. But I can actually give you that answer right here and now. Zuku stood right up as he put his right hand in front of Night Eye's mouth, stopping him from speaking. The reason why I know all of this is because I'm all for one successor. I have all the information about that day in my head thanks to the memories of my predecessor. Everyone was completely startled, not expecting this turn of event. The entire jury was looking back and forth at each other as the judge started to slam his gavel down, trying to get everyone to calm down. How can you be the successor of a dead man by your story? You only got to talk to him for a few minutes before he died, so can you explain to me how you're able to take up his mantle that way? Izuku didn't know what to say as he started to look back and forth for a moment, realizing that all for one activated their mental link with each other as he stood right beside Izuku. As he whispered something into Izuku, Izuku's ears as he finally stood up and went in front of everybody. Well, instead of hearing it from me, why don't you hear it from the man himself? Everyone didn't understand what that was supposed to mean as they saw Izuku activate his clone quirk, but instead of a version of himself coming out, All for One was able to show himself in the flesh, shocking everybody as All Might was about to leap from his chair, but Endeavor grabbed him by his shoulder and slammed him right back down into his seat. All Might was completely enraged seeing his lifetime enemy alive again. Even in death, you still find ways to mess with society. Society. All for one smiled as his white hair was covering his eyes. He used his left hand to motion it out of his face. Hello there, everyone. I was hoping to keep my predecessor's identity a secret for a lot longer, but I'm not going to allow you to push him around. But whatever questions you have, I'm ready to answer them. The judge was completely thrown back by the turn of events. All right, why did you pick Izuku to be your predecessor when you didn't even know him? All for one put his hand to his chin, thinking about it for a second. Well, it's kind of obvious. When I was dying, he actually reached reached out and tried to help me. I felt moved by his words, so I decided to give him the gift of my power. And because of that, people started to turn on him. His own father decided to throw him away. He did find people who care for him and want to see him succeed. Oh so yeah, that will be my statement. Is there any other questions you want to ask me? All Might stood up and got off the stands as he walked over to All For One, grabbing him by his collar. Because of you, my son turned into a monster. I only got rid of him because of you. I know you plan to one day use him against all of us. I'll never trust any anybody like you. All for one just sighed as he smacked all my hands off of him so he could stand on his own without being choked out. Your son had no powers and was bullied no matter what so I gave him something to live for and be proud of but you can't let go of the fact that his happiness comes from somebody that you hate. I have no intentions of causing trouble but you can't believe that no matter what happens. I am not the villain in this situation. You are Mr. Symbol of Peace. Both of them were about to get into a heated argument as the judge actually slammed down his gavel making everyone come back to order as all for one poofed out of existence showing that the clone was out of time as everybody finally went back to their seats and started to discuss things civilized amongst themselves as the judge felt like it was finally time to get a verdict all right now we will allow the jury to vote upon these men's freedom or will they be placed in prison you know the majority rules it does not have to be unanimous we'll start with number 10 and then work our way up to number one so do know that you'll have to give your reasons for voting and why you feel this way as the jury was about to give their vote a man in a business suit walked into the courtroom with a little girl that looks like she's about one years old in a stroller. Overall, had a shocked look on his face, realizing what this must mean. As for the first time in this entire court meeting, he stood up as he placed both his hands down onto the table, trying to get everybody's attention for one last thing. Wait, before you vote, there's one last thing I need to add on to the agreement, and it has to do with that little girl. I wish to be granted full custody over her. I know that a lot of you people here will probably not trust me with a child, but the former boss actually wanted me to take care of her if anything happened to him or her parents seeing that she's here means that they all have to be gone yoku was the first to speak having mixed feelings about this entire new development you can't honestly believe that we're going to entrust a child to you do you overhaul started to feel desperate knowing what he might have to do listen i don't care if i have to go under heavy surveillance but you have to allow me to honor one agreement that was from my past do you truly want to leave a girl like that in foster care so whatever it is you gotta tell me to do i'm going to follow it so please just leave her in my care. Yoku was completely surprised by the amount of compassion that Overhaul had for this little girl's safety. Alright, I'll agree to having her under your supervision as long as you promise for weekly inspections on her health and well-being. If there is one thing found wrong with her, she will be automatically taken away from your custody. Do you agree to these terms? Zuku was about to speak when Chronostasis grabbed his arm and shook his head not to get involved. As Overhaul could see that everybody was waiting for his response, even the judge felt like this was actually very kind for someone of his caliber. 
overall didn't even think about it for a minute. I can agree to those terms. I don't care if you have to have someone watching us every day. I don't plan on doing any harm to her and I don't plan on going back to my villain life. The judge then looked over at the jury as most of them nodded in agreement for the young girl's custody to be put in overall his hands as he slammed down his gavel. Alright, with all that side business taken care of, it's time for the final verdict of overhaul and his friends to be decided on if they go to prison or not. You know that if they decide to send you to prison, you will lose all custody rights to that girl, so may the heroes have mercy on you. Since all of the jury seem to be ready to give their answer, I will allow them to answer in whatever order they feel fit. Endeavor was the first person to stand up to give his opinion on everything. I vote that we let them go, allowing them to have their freedom so we can get the information on the Yakuza. Plus, if they decide to do some hero work with us after they get their licenses, they will be a major help to everyone. Fox was the next person to stand up after Endeavor took his seat. I say that we let them go, start fresh. Besides, if you realize that their quirks will be a major help for medical and rescue benefits. Plus, I don't know if you've seen Chronostasis' record, but he's actually a great negotiator and investigator, so the police force will definitely benefit from him. Mirko then stood up as Hawk started to take his seat. I think that he deserves his freedom all because of the new information that was brought to the surface. He's a stepfather, and if he's going to start his new life, maybe this little girl will help him keep on the right path. Being a mother myself, I believe that children can sometimes bring out the best version of yourself. Wash stood up next, having mixed feelings about all of this. I honestly don't know how to feel about all this information that's been brought forward. And what we've actually been shown is two different people. In front of me right now is a villain known as Overall who should be killed basically on sight. But now that I've seen him here in court, placing his heart and his future in someone else's hands, I just see a man who was trying to make right for all the things that were going wrong. So I say you have my vote for your freedom. Headshot then stood up as he was ready to give his opinion. I'm sorry, but I actually cannot let former crimes be forgiven for what you have done. Because of the drugs that you have created, a lot of villains think that they're invincible. Just because you're willing to give away your entire organization and try to start a new life doesn't mean that the damage hasn't already been done, so my vote is for you to be locked away. Rust then stood up with an intense glare. I vote for you to be locked away along with your friends. I've lost a lot of good people trying to take down your entire organization, so I do not think that you're worthy of being redeemed. Rust Genus then stood up as he seemed like he was still trying to think about what his decision should be. I can completely understand your want for change, but I still think you're too much of a wild card. Maybe after some time in prison, we'll let you out, but my vote right now is for you to be locked up. Might stood up as he had a look on his face like he was ready to throw the book at all of them automatically. I say that all of you should be locked up in the darkest parts of Tartarus. The fact that we're having this discussion really blows my mind. Judd wasn't too surprised seeing that it was a complete split decision, seeing that there was only two heroes left to vote. Alrighty, these next two votes will decide the fate of everything. Louis Woods then stood up realizing that a lot of pressure was on his shoulders as he was about to make a decision. I vote that we let them go. My reason is because I've seen certain villains on the street warned to get better lives if they just had the opportunity to do so. They often don't do the crimes that they do because they want to. They do it because they don't have any other choice, but if they see that a crime boss like Overhaul is willing to make a change for his life, maybe they'll do the same. Tension in the room seemed to get thick, realizing that there was one last person to vote. This could either cause the entire thing to tie, which would make people have to readdress their decision, or it gives Overhaul and his friends their freedom. Everyone was seeming to stare at Ryoku for a very long time, wondering what she was going to do. Ryoku stood up with a stern look on her face. I will vote for their freedom as long as I get to be the one to supervise Overhaul and his new daughter. Overhaul smiled, seeing that they can finally start their new future. I have no complaints to that. The judge was plenty surprised as he grabbed his gavel and slammed it down. Well, the verdict has been met. Overhaul, you and your friends are free to go. But don't forget to arrive at the police station tomorrow morning to give out all the information that you agreed to give. That said, court is adjourned. And that's where I'm going to end it off. Make sure to hit that like goal and check out our Discord. But with all that said, I'm out, you guys. Peace.